Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venicia, this is the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast and today I am joining you for a special episode. It will be a pattern roundup of 11 cabled jumpers that I really want to knit. This year I made my very first cabled garment. It was a slipover. I wanted to dip my toes into uh, making cables, seeing if I was up to the task, if it was challenging, if it was something that I found tedious and not enjoyable, if I liked the look of them, and uh, I realized that I loved it and I really really wanted to make a cable jumper. And I know that there's quite a lot, there's a huge variety of cable jumper patterns out there from a variety of designers, and there's lots of different cables, there's all over cables, subtle ones, and I found that I was quite picky about the ones that I liked. There was a lot of cable jumpers that I immediately thought I don't like those ones, I really don't see myself wearing them. And then on the other hand, there were patterns that I was absolutely smitten with and just really, really wanted and craved. So I was been, I've been compiling this list for quite a while. I've also been purchasing some yarn and I have some of some sweater quantities to show you for some of those jumpers. And the ones that I don't have yarns for, I'm pretty sure what yarn I want and also what color. Because something that's very important to me is to have variety in my wardrobe and in my yarns. I really am on a mission to never buy the same yarn in the same color twice. So something that's quite common with cable jumpers is to have a cream or a white cable jumper and I really don't think I need 11 cream cable jumpers. So I've been kind of planning in my head and also on paper which ones are going to be white, which ones are going to be medium shades or darker colors just to avoid ending up with the exact same jumper. So I thought if you're the kind of person that is like me and we have the, sim the similar tastes for cables then this video is for you and I hope that you'll find some inspiration. I've tried not to go for the very popular classic designers, although there will be some patterns from My Favorite Things Knitwear and Sari Nordland, for example, but I think there will be a few that you haven't heard of or seen before, that is my hope. And I know that not all of these will be to people's taste or that there's a lot of sweaters that I'm missing out on. So if you have any suggestions for nice cable jumpers, please add them below. I also wanted to say that I'm going to be compiling this huge list in a Ravelry bundle, the link of which will be down below, as well as all the information about the designers, patterns, yarns that I'm showing on screen and color names and things like that. So definitely check out the description. You can also gift me one of these patterns if you desired. I have also linked my Ravelry wishlist in which uh, some of these cable jumpers I would be very grateful if you gifted them. There's an option to do that on Ravelry and that maybe will make me knit them faster if I have the pattern. So definitely give that a look if you want. While you're on Ravelry you can also follow me at The Woolly Worker and you can also follow me on Instagram at The Woolly Worker and Ko-Fi at The Woolly Worker and all the links will be below as always. If you're uh, not new here, then maybe you're sick of me saying that every time, but there are new people every time So I thought it's best to mention all the social media links just to cover all the bases It was really hard to whittle down the list to just 11 and that's why the Ravelry bundle will have more than just 11 patterns and I probably will keep adding to that list in the future. So you can definitely favorite that Ravelry bundle if you want. But I think that's it for the introduction and I will just go straight into it. I'm gonna try this time to really leave the photos on screen as much as possible because when I'm referring to those patterns, I think it's just better as a viewer when you still have that image in front of you, especially if you don't know the pattern that I'm referring to or you haven't heard of it before. Okay, so I'll start with the first pattern. The first pattern is the Canvas by Orlan Zuch. And it's a pattern that uh, was published in a collaboration with Brooklyn Tweed in their uh, magazine in 2021. And then now Orlan is also selling it as an individual pattern. And I think it's an absolutely stunning, very visually interesting cabled jumper. It has a big cable panel in the middle. And then I'm pretty sure it's a moss stitch texture on the side and in the underarm. It is a raglan design and it actually isn't a moss stitch texture, it is a combination of knits and pearls. The cable central panel is absolutely stunning. There's a few, there's a couple of braids going out and then there's this zigzag motif as well as a central twist. And I've seen a lot of people crop this jumper which I thought looked absolutely adorable and would look stunning with high-waisted skirts and tights over winter. And I'm putting this pattern first because I've decided that this is one of my absolutely, like, absolute favorite cable jumpers of all time. And I want to um, 
honor it by actually making this one in the cream white color because that is the one that I think is going to be on top of my list. It is a worsted weight pattern, the original sample you use Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is a yarn that's quite easy to substitute and a lot of people have used the Rerum Natura Gilead. So that's the yarn I'm going to go for because in the UK we really don't have access to Brooklyn Tweed. And the shade I've chosen for Gilead is an extremely popular shade and it was really hard to get my hands on it, which is why I already have this in my stash as opposed to waiting for the right time to buy it, because it was just never in stock. Then it is Poivre Blanc, which means white pepper. And I hope that the camera will pick this up, but it's a really, really nice neutral off-white that leans more on the gray and the cool tones, as opposed to the creamy, yellowish, warm tones. And it's got some flecks of gray kind of marled into it and spun with it. I absolutely adore this yarn. I'm working with it right now on a project. It is very lofty and plump. I think it is woolen spun. You get a very generous 250 meters per 100 gram ball. So actually with only four balls, you could make a cropped version of this for my size and you know five or six balls for uh, a longer version of it. And this yarn is not too pricey. I was able to get this on sale from a yarn shop that was closing and actually, funnily enough, I, I wanted to save money so I, I was going to only buy four balls of this and I was ready to play yarn chicken if needed. And then in the mail I actually received six balls of the yarn and I messaged the owner saying, oh, if this was a gift, thank you very much, I wasn't expecting it and if it was a mistake I just wanted to let you know. And then Sharon told me uh, it was actually a mistake but I'm happy for you to, to keep those two extra balls. So I will not be playing yarn chicken, I'm able to make this full length if I want to. I think I want to go for just medium length, like hitting me at the hip bone will be good because I don't have that many winter dresses, but I'm also not a huge fan of overly long jumpers, especially if they don't have a split hem. I can find it a bit uncomfortable when I'm sitting down. But I don't want to have my midriff exposed in winter, especially if I'm wearing my joggers. I'd like to have that skin covered. So yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to making this pattern. I don't have this pattern yet, but I do have the yarn and I think it is definitely on my priority list for this winter. It's got 11 sizes and it is worked flat at the beginning to raise the back neck and then join in the round and just worked top down like a normal raglan so you can easily adjust the length of the sleeves and the body. So it looks like it's gonna be an relatively easy PZ ride. There doesn't seem to be that many cables that you've got to keep a, like track of when they're switching. So I think this will be really exciting and that's why it was first on my list. The second pattern is the Lucia Pullover by Sari Nordland. This is a relatively new pattern. It came out last... Um, well, like actually it came out in spring, so in March 2023. My friend Sam was a test knitter for it and she knitted her version in a light grey and I thought that it was a really nice take on a cabled iron jumper. It is a worsted weight jumper. The original is in lace and sport together, but uh, a lot of people had success with just using a normal worsted or maybe a DK with mohair. And I've decided to go for actually also the Rara Natura and it is also Gilia and it is in their uh, grey colour which is called, I want to say, Goelon, which is an animal I think, uh, like some kind of moose. So here's Goelon and I really really like this shade. It, it seems a, a tiny bit darker in real life than it is on camera but I think it'll be perfect to not obscure the twisted stitches and the cables. It's got nice marling like white and light grey heathered look to it and because I've already spoken about this yarn just before I won't go into too much detail about this but I thought it was a really really nice wintry color and this pattern the Lucia is so intricate looking and really beautiful from what I heard the pattern is quite laborious there's a lot to do there's really not a lot of respite there's a lot of twisted stitches which is kind of a flagship stitch from Japanese lace bibles and is something that I was doing in Sari Nordland socks earlier this summer. So I am familiar with the kind of patterning that it is and I think I absolutely need that patterning on the jumper to wear, but it will be a lot of work. I'm quite happy to be doing this without a mohair and with just one strand. I might print the pattern off so I'm able to 
align some of them together or I might take some screenshots and put them on Photoshop and then read that. I find it difficult when cable charts are on different pages, obviously. There are nine sizes for this pattern and it is a drop shoulder, so you'll be working the front and the back flat uh, and then joining them to continue in the body and pick up the sleeve from there. Uh, from what I can see on the photo details of the pattern, there's a, a really gorgeous shoulder line where you pick up your stitches and you continue the cables as seamlessly as possible, as well as the, the sleeves that you're picking up. It looks very well thought out, not sloppy at all, and very detailed. It just seems like something that is going to last forever and will not go out of style, and it is that kind of iron jumper that you're just going to keep reaching for in the summer and that's why I also chose a very neutral color because because there's so much going on already with the patterning and it is very eye-catching I didn't want to go for too bright a color. I bought five skeins of Gilead because I don't think that this one is meant to be too cropped and like I said I'm gonna try and get the right lens for me I might play around a little bit and worst case scenario if I have it quite long I might split the hem as a modification but I think this is a bit of an underrated pattern maybe it's because it is relatively new but I think there really should be more versions of this and I really hope people make this one with me in winter I think I'm going to race my friend Sam. She started hers for the test net and they didn't need to finish the whole jumper. And I think it would be funny if I was able to catch up with her before she finishes her. Although I don't think she would think that that was funny. Okay, the next jumper is completely different and is really, really unique. And it is from, I guess, an underrated up and coming Instagram designer, which is Other Loops. They've got quite a lot of patterns either for summer and winter. And this specific pattern is the Waffle Loop Sweater. And it is absolutely gorgeous. It is consisting of the waffle stitch on the front yoke, the upper panel and the sleeves. And this is a stitch that is very easily made with knits and pearls. And then there are some cables as well on the front, all the way down the body. There's some kind of um, zigzags again, as well as some twists. So the cables themselves aren't complicated and I don't see them being, you know, spanning over 12 stitches or anything. I think it'll be very easily committed to memory and the twists are always very easy. I find it's just usually, you know, two over two or three over three every X number of row. And usually I just use a light bulb stitch marker to keep track of my rows for cables because it is difficult to read your stitches, your rows with cables, I personally find. But I really want to make this jumper. I've seen a couple of versions in like a latte, you know, light beige color, cream, milk. I, I really like those ones. There's also this one in a very medium neutral tone, which is, um, I guess, a gr mm, is it a brown or a gray? It's just very medium is the word that comes to mind. And then I've also seen some dark versions, which I think are also stunning. The yarn that is recommended is um, Lana, Pura Lana from Gepard, but also with a lace strand. They recommend cashmere lace, for example, which is quite pricey and quite the investment, but would be really, really nice. But I'm thinking I might just buy Isigur Alpaca 1 and hold that with Pure Lana. Pure Lana has quite a lot of colors that are very neutral and lots of different cool and warm shades of those neutrals, like grays and browns. So I think maybe if I go again in London in person to my ivory room and see it in her shop, I might be able to perfectly find the shade that I have in mind for my complexion, but if not, I'll just have to shop online and hope for the best, and then I'll be able to hopefully match this with the Isagur Alpaca one or uh, Filcalana Alva, which is a, a lace trend that is really nice to hold. I don't think I want mohair for this, as I wouldn't want it to obscure the cables. Another yarn that is recommended for this is Isagur Jensen, which in my opinion is a bit rougher and scratchier than Pura Lana, which is a 50-50 wool alpaca blend. And I think that the drape will be amazing with Pura Lana. I think for this jumper you also want a relatively light yarn and not too heavy. A lot of the jumpers I'm talking about in this Ravelry bundle are worsted weight, pretty much. And this one is no exception, the gauge is 19 stitches. Now the problem with this pattern is that there are only three sizes available, which obviously is not ideal. And it is meant to be worn with between 15 to 30 centimeters of positive ease. It is a drop shoulder and 
I don't know if I'll be making this jumper this year because I'm not super sure yet of what color I want. I don't have the pattern and I don't have the yarn and I guess I'd rather advertise and talk about patterns that were size inclusive in my regular podcast episodes but it is still on my to knit list so I thought I'd include it in this Ravelry bundle in this type of pattern roundup video. But I'll just move on to the next pattern now. We're going back to Surrey Norland and this time it is the Billy Pullover. Rebecca from the Korea Bea test knitted this, uh, I want to say maybe yeah two years ago, it was in December 2021 and I remember her talking about how it was a lot of work because it is absolutely all over cables on the sleeves as well and also she mentioned that the central panel which is a honeycomb cable was quite constrictive so I want to be very mindful of what size I pick, I might go for a size up and really lean into this oversized cable look as opposed to feeling very like boa constrictor cabled inside my own clothes, which I, I don't want. On the downside, that means that I'll have to be knitting more. But I do have the yarn for this. I saw someone on Ravelry that used this color and I am feeling a bit of doubt about it because I think now in retrospect, it is a little too warm tone, but it is a very interesting color that is called Antiqued Heather. And my worry with this color is that it looks like a white yarn that was left too long on like outside and it aged. So it's kind of like yellowish aged wool. But on the other hand, it actually isn't that yellow and it's more like beigey, creamy looking. It is a very interesting color and it is also heathered where you can see some flecks of white, some flecks of yellow, even a little bit of grey, I believe, which makes it look super interesting and three-dimensional. And I think, again, because the cables are so interesting and there's so much going on, I wanted to go for a neutral colour, and I think that this will look better on me than a pure white would. And I already have quite a lot of cool tones of whites, and I thought I'd try this cream, and if I don't like it, I don't have to buy this kind of colour anymore. This one does have a moss stitch, um, pattern on the inside as well as obviously the, the, the boa constrictor, the honeycomb cable lattice in the middle, some twisty um, cables and on the sleeves as well. It also has a twisty raglan which I think is absolutely amazing. I think the gib by Andrea Maori also has that detail and I've been favoriting every pattern that I come across that has a cable raglan. I love that and I've read some tips about how to not get holes when you do this on some Raveler notes that I favorited as well. So I want to be ready for this. The other thing that I've seen on Ravelry is people, instead of using the honeycomb center panel, they've replaced that stitch pattern with a lattice cabled, which I have done before. I never finished that jumper, but I have tried the lattice. And funnily enough, on the first, I don't know, eight, 10 rounds, I got it wrong and I didn't fix it and it was really bothering me. But with the lattice, you're really crisscrossing so much. So under, over, under, over, under, over, everywhere. So it is easy to make a mistake and the mistakes will be noticeable. And I think if I transition to that patterning, I might confuse myself and make things harder for myself. But I do prefer the visual look of a lattice as opposed to the honeycomb. And I have seen what it looks like on the jumper and it fits perfectly. I think it would be able, you'd, you'd be able to do it with the same amount of stitches so you wouldn't have to fudge around with the stitch counts. So I'll have a think about that and I'll feed back on to you if I do change it. Cascade 220, I don't know if I said that this yarn was Cascade 220, but it is the recommended yarn. I think Sari did hers in the natural white colorway, which I said I didn't want to do because I wanted to do an off-white, but it looks stunning in that gorgeous natural white color. And it comes in nine sizes, and the recommended ease is one to four inches. So it actually is meant to be less oversized than a few of those other jumpers that I've shown you. But like I said, I might decide just for comfort to size up a size and go for maybe 15 centimeters instead of 10 centimeters. I think that wouldn't be too crazy a switch. The other thing that's important to notice is that there are no written charts for this pattern. Sari sometimes offers both options in some patterns, but here she specifies that it's only charted, which is fine. And personally, I find those much clearer and easier to keep track of than line by line, but obviously everybody has 
different preferences on how they approach patterns. And I don't know if I would recommend this as a first cable project. I don't know if any of these would be good beginner cable projects. I guess I don't really know what would consist of a good beginner cable project. Maybe something that just has the twists as opposed to different cable charts. And I guess we're actually going to be coming on to that for a couple of future patterns. So yeah, stay tuned. The next pattern is sweater number 20 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. I recently, very recently, bought the yarn for this in a Knitting for Olive sale. So the recommended yarn is Philcolana Peruvian Highland Wool and Philcolana Alva. So you got that one strand of DK slash worsted with um, fingering or lace, and that gives you an iron kind of gauge. And the yarn I went for is actually Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino. And I will be holding this with a strand of Alva once I get my hands on it. But here's the color I went for for the Heavy Merino. As you can see, it's kind of similar to what I'm wearing now because even though I wasn't too, too sure about this color, I've received lots of compliments about it. My boyfriend loves this on me. And I thought that I would maybe wake this color up a little bit. It's quite muted with a more vibrant lace strand so i'm thinking of the color vintage rose from like alva or flamingo and i'll put both of them here and you can maybe tell me which one i should go for but i really want to make this pattern i've seen a lot of people do it i think it looks great in the cream but i think it looks really really nice in different colors i've seen like brown camel versions there's um the pink one here i've seen someone do and i've seen blue ones there's a very beautiful pistachio green I think you can have fun with that one and I've seen a black one actually, someone on Instagram did it in black and it looked really really cool as well. The problem again is that it only comes in three sizes, My Favorite Things Knitwear has been going back into old patterns and updating them so hopefully this one is on her list as well. She's been receptive to feedback and understanding of that need to re-update sizes and she hasn't said that she wasn't going to do it. So. Keeping an eye on that, the pattern is a drop shoulder v-neck cable jumper with um, two by two ribbing details, very oversized. The sleeves don't seem to have many decreases to them. And yeah, I don't see this as being too hard a pattern. The cables, there's not that many different ones, but I think the center, this central panel, the v-neck and then the cable that is just right at the point of the V is so eye-catching and if you had like oversized sleeves you, you would just wrap yourself up in your big cabled oversized jumper and I'm really looking forward to using that yarn combination so that one I probably will want to do this year as well once I get some Alva. The next project is the Snow Crocus by Midori Hirose and I didn't know of this pattern before I it was it came out in 2020 so it's quite an old pattern, but I saw Hella from my knitted journal. She's Danish Musings here on YouTube, I'll link her below, and it's Hella's Knitting Journal on Instagram. She recently made a version with an absolutely mind-blowing, eye-catching main strand of purple with a green mohair. And you wouldn't think that it works, but it does, and it is the most beautiful spring-looking piece of knitwear. She was very honest in her descriptions, description of the knitting process and how complex it may be because there were a, a lot of instructions. I think she said there were dozens of pages of patterning and obviously it's to account for different sizes but it was hard to keep track of where your size was. So it looks like it's a ride and I'll be ready for it. I have seen people knit it in Gilead, which gave quite a different look than Hella's version. I don't know, maybe I would do this one with a Surrey alpaca, even though I would be afraid of hiding the details of the cables. It does seem like it's not just cables on this pattern. There's also some textured stitches and obviously you've got the snow crocuses at the front panel. So I think it would look really stunning with a fluffy second strand and it's got a very interesting sort of big funnel neck that looks different than all the other double folded necks colors that um, the previous patterns have featured. This pattern comes in a large range of sizes. It has, it has 12 sizes and they recommend a yarn that I cannot really get here, which is why 
I'm still unsure of what I'm going to do. I also am not sure what color I want to go for this jumper because it only recently came onto my radar. I've only recently been following the hashtag on Instagram, keeping an eye out for new projects and figuring out what colors really speak to me and which ones will make this pattern shine. And as well, as always, remembering that I don't want it to be too similar to a piece I already have or already have plans for. But I think I've just talked myself into here, I've decided the second strand will be a lace alpaca because I, uh, uh, a brushed alpaca, because I don't want mohair, but I think I want the fluffiness. The gauge is 15 stitches and 23 rows, so quite thick, in which case the brushed alpaca will be perfect because that has quite a lot of thickness already. And then maybe I'll have Feel Good Up or even Helen Wool as my first strand, although the risk with that is that one is quite heavy, so maybe instead I could choose a wool and spun main strand. I'll just keep an eye on it. It has about 600 projects on Ravelry, so it's not completely underrated, but um, I think it looks like a very interesting piece, and I think it's kind of teaching me that my style when it comes to cable jumpers is I quite like it when you've got that central panel and then some moss stitch on the sides and then a bit of cables on the sleeves. I think is kind of my aesthetic or perfect cable jumper vision. Okay, next we have the Ego Sweater by Ego Knits. She's also a bit of an underrated designer that's been really prolific lately, coming out with a lot of new patterns and very popular on Instagram, but not so much on Ravelry. So uh, it's definitely someone that's worth following on Instagram. I really like what they're coming up with and they always have really nice collaborations with Gepard Garns, which are increasingly making their way to the UK and getting more available to me and to us, hopefully, which is really nice because Apart from the cashmere yarns, the Gepard yarns are pretty affordable and not in the high range, but the quality of it is really good. So the yarn that they're using and recommending for this pattern is Gepard Puno, which is a blown yarn or a mesh net one. There's some dupes that you can find, for example, Drops Air or Send This Garn Kos, or the last one is, I think, Camarose Snefnag, for example. All of these would get you the same effect, but I think I've tried a few of the ones I've just mentioned and I'd like to get my hands on some Gepard Puno to see if I like it. They have a nice range of colors. Uh, the main pattern here that I've been showing you is in this light pink, which I think is really pretty, but I'm not sure if I want to commit to that light pink for me just yet. Uh, I've been really enjoying the pinks lately, but I think that's quite a big commitment. So I also really like the cream version, but like I said, I already have quite a lot of white, creamy off-whites ones. So something that I've seen on Instagram is someone doing it in this beautiful dark blue. So not quite a navy, it's a little more muted and less saturated and a bit more grey as opposed to very blue tones, but it's not that dark that you can't see what's going on, but because the sweater is very oversized and very in your face, the sleeves are very large, which I heard people adding decreasing decreases at the wrist just to cinch everything back in, otherwise the sweater is a little unusable. So the, the, the piece is, is a statement, and I think having a muted color and obscuring a little bit of the details is actually a good idea to make it more wearable day to day, as opposed to this huge uh, statement. And also because in my mind, I, I'm just... I really want to one day commit to making a very dark colored cable jumper. I've said to some people I want to make it in black. Nowadays I'm maybe leaning less towards absolute black and maybe more towards very dark grays or very dark navies because I think I need less contrast on me and so having a very dark navy is like as dark as I'm gonna go. And I think it's just really brave to do cables in a navy and the results will be very worth it, even though some people might, might argue you can't see anything anymore, but I think it is worth it. This is a bulky gauge, so we're at 14 stitches per 24 rows. It comes in four sizes, again, not completely ideal, and it is very, very oversized. So we've got a circumference ranging from 114 to 156 centimeters finished um, circumference. And they're actually not telling you what the recommended ease is, but you can see on people who model it that it is a lot. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be making this jumper this year. I don't have the yarn, uh, although it is available in the UK, so I could go and buy it. I'm still in two minds about those two colors. I'll put them here so you can maybe help me pick. One of them is a bit more dark and one of them is a bit more um, 
saturated so I'll, I'll, I'll let you tell me which one you think would be nice for this kind of jumper but it looks like something that would be really really nice and squishy not itchy or scratchy like those kind of blown yarn are always very nice and usually filled with alpaca fibers I believe for extra softness and the yarn you require a lot I think for my size I would need pretty much 11 balls and the balls can be around eight pounds so it would be an investment but hopefully that sweater would last a long time and could be worn for the whole of winter. Again, for full transparency, I have read some things on Instagram and also on the Ravelry Project pages that it is a complex sweater, a bit harder to understand, maybe some issues with translation, unfortunately, and maybe mistakes. But I have heard from the designer on Instagram that they're planning to release an update to the pattern, which is also why I guess this is going to be on the back burner until that happens, and maybe until more people do it on Ravelry, so I can copy their very helpful notes. And I think it has brioche on the sleeves, which is really, really nice and squishy. And it also has this honeycomb cable, as well as the twist, it has quite a lot of different cables, which will be a lot to keep track of. So I definitely wouldn't recommend that for a beginner. And even I am kind of wary of casting this one on. But I really have this vision for that one in a dark color. Okay, now we're going back to Sari Nordland for the third pattern from her in this series, and it is the Sawyer Pullover. And it is quite different from the other ones, and I guess it goes against what I just said with my preferred look for cable jumpers, because this one actually doesn't have a central panel, but it has side panels. So the center is in, I want to say moss stitch again, but I could be wrong. And then you have those nice little twists and cables going along the side, and it is a drop shoulder, which I really like, and I think will be very nice, comfortable, slouchy, for cables and it has those like folded, this folded hem and it looks like folded cuffs on the pattern photo. Yes, the cuffs are folded double, which looks extra cozy. It says that it's a unisex pattern and it is easy to memorize and easy to do. So if we take her word for it, this could maybe be a beginner project. It is worked bottom up, however, which I guess adds this layer of difficulty in my case anyway, because of trying to estimate the fit but maybe once I already have a few cable jumpers and I know what size I like, I could use that as a template for myself. It recommends six to eight inches of positive ease, which is 15 to 20 centimeters. So more oversized than the Billy, for example, which is good in my case. The cable pattern is only charted and there are eight sizes for this cable jumper. This one is actually a DK jumper, which I'm really attracted to because as much as I will enjoy working with big needles and big yarn and having those work up faster in cables, I guess, even though the cables will slow me down. I prefer the fabric and the lightness of DK fabrics, if not fingering, but I've not found any fingering cable patterns yet that I liked. So this one is DK and it looks gorgeous. And the yarn that's recommended I am obsessed with and it is Hedgehog, Hedgehog Fibers Tweedy, which I really like the, eth the ethos of. You get this yarn that then uses recycled hand-dyed leftovers and scraps, which then make the flex of that tweed. From their factory, Hedgehog Fibers, they do a lot of hand-dyed. And they actually have quite a few bases of this tweedy, like base colors. They have a very dark version, which I also really liked, but I think is a bit too dark and too contrasting for this cabled motif. I think it will clash. But they have this like Connemara base, which is a sage green. They have one that's a kind of pinkish hue. And then they just have the normal Tweedy base, which I think was just their original one, their first one, which is just this very neutral beige with Tweedy Flex. And I really want this yarn. I think it makes the pattern, even though lots of people have made their versions of this pattern without that yarn. So it's easy enough to find a DK yarn that meets gauge. But I think... I wouldn't know what else to make with that Tweedy yarn. I think it is pricey, so it is special. And I feel like the sweater is up to the task at being special enough for that yarn, as opposed to like just a normal drop shoulder or raglan. And I don't think that the tweed detracts from the simple cables. So I am totally influenced by the original sample. I will be copying it very likely in the original color. I was kind of tempted by the Connemara sage color, but I think I might get sick of that faster than I would a neutral base. So I'll go for neutral to make sure I can wear this sweater as much as possible without being sick of it. And I think what I'm going to do is just have this pattern on the back burner and one day 
reward myself for something with that yarn and buy it for myself, maybe as a present for Christmas, or maybe if I go on a yarn ban and I reward myself at the end with that so that I feel like I'll, I'll have earned it and worked for that because I already have enough yarn right now. I should do other patterns first. So maybe this will be a cable jumper for next winter once I have worked through some of my stash now and that I can move on to something very special like this. Let me know if you've worked with Hedgehog Fiber Tweety before. Uh, is it worth the hype? Is it worth the price? I think there are some bubbles as well in this pattern which ups the level of difficulty and I've heard of lots of different techniques to make bubbles pop more like a crochet hook or tying them with a knot so I will be looking into all the best techniques to make this pattern as well made as possible and I've not made bubbles yet so I look forward to having this new skill in my arsenal. Okay, we have three more patterns. So the next one is sweater number 15 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And it is one that you've very likely seen and heard of before. It was released in 2021. And that one is just so store-bought looking because it is like so classic. It is a classic shape and a classic motif it's all over cables but they're the same cables in the same direction same intervals there's a really really nice shoulder detail it is a drop shoulder and so that kind of line of the drop shoulder is a cable and it is very natural and flowy the way that it works out it looks really polished you've got those big sleeves as well with a small rib some people have had success in again cinching in the rib at the wrist and having those bell balloon sleeves or I've also seen someone adding their own decreases to actually taper the sleeves even though that's not in the pattern. The yarn suggested are um, Gepard Wild and Soft and Gepard Kit Sita, Sita which is like a fingering and a mohair so you get this kind of DK gauge. It's 23 stitches per 29 rows and cables. And what I've decided to go for is an alpaca version and I've decided to go for Isiger Alpaca 1 and 2 and I've decided to go for this wonderful color that is 100% me, definitely one of my favorite shades and it is blue, it is a light blue and I've worked with this combination before and loved the fabric that it gave me. I've done color work with it and it was fine. I haven't done cables with this. I hope that the stitch definition will be good. I know that the alpaca one will give it a bit of a fuzz and a bit of a halo, but nothing as strong as a mohair, which is fine. I think it'll be very, very drapey, which is what this oversized drop shoulder, oversized sleeves makes me feel is important with this is not necessarily structure and density. Structure and density, I see it more as being very drapey and loose. This one comes in six sizes and it doesn't say how many centimeters of ease is recommended or at least not on Ravelry here, but maybe, at least not on Ravelry here, but maybe it does in the pattern details once you buy it. But I hesitated for so long about what color to make this in because I've seen lots of neutral versions and I really like them. But because it is so simple, I think that this pattern actually does benefit from having a bit of visual interest that is brought on by the color. So I've seen again someone doing it in a lilac, light purple, or... Oh, the light is leaving me. Someone doing it in a purple, or a pink, or a green. I've seen a lot of light versions of that, and I really, really like it. But I'm sure it would look great as well in a dark color. I think I really want to make this jumper very soon. I have to yarn for it after all. So yeah, let me know if you've made this jumper and if so, what were your thoughts on it? Is it worth the hype that it got? And was it long and tedious or was it quite addictive to do all those cables because you're always wanting to reach the next cabling row? But I look forward to making this one. The next one is really similar but I wanted to talk about it because it is a different gauge and different needles. So this one is the Bonnie Cable Sweater from Sennes Garn. It was in a booklet. Um, I have the booklet. It came out about two years ago and there's been quite... there's not been that many versions of it but I've seen some colored versions and then not colored versions. And I'm still in two minds about whether I want something that is neutral or not. I've seen people doing it in white, which I did really, really like. And because I'm already gonna be doing the sweater number 15 in blue like that, I don't think I'm gonna go for the blue of the model, even though it is really up my alley. 
This one is made with Sunday's Garden Double Sunday, held with their tin silk mohair. So you get that worsted gauge once again, 19 stitches gauge. But um, I was thinking of doing a mohair free version and just having one strand of yarn. I was thinking maybe Gilead because that is something that I, I know would work or heavy merino or maybe even the fiber company Lore. And I was thinking of not using any second strand or mohair uh, for one maybe just to make it a bit more affordable and cheaper but also because i am curious to see how those cables would look not with a second strand and i know that i can reach that gauge with those yarns that i've used in the past and i'm comfortable with and know this one comes in six or seven sizes and it is only in that magazine booklet thing, which I know not everybody has access to. And I'm also a little bit wary of following instructions from a booklet. I know that they're not going to be holding my hand and maybe it might be harder to reach people for like su pattern support if there are issues. But I have seen people talk about it on Ravelry. There's only five projects on Ravelry, which is not a lot. But some of these notes are quite helpful. And I feel like I'm at this point now where I probably am experienced enough to just be able to follow the instructions and just get on with it and if not I could maybe message someone on Instagram who has made it even though they've not left a project on Ravelry but yeah actually my friend Madeline has made this one so I could just ask her which is good it is also a drop shoulder so I am worried about them looking too similar with the sweater number 15 but like I said if I use a completely different yarn and is a completely different gauge and a different color I think that will prevent me from having the exact same jumper in the wardrobe and then very lastly, we have another pattern from Ego Knits. And that one has been on my radar ever since they started teasing it and test knitting it. And I bought the pattern when it came out. And I think there is a new update on it, actually, since there was some feedback from people. And it is the Sarang Sweater by Ego Knit. And Helle from The Knitted Journal has made that one as well. So she, I think she test knits for Ego Knits quite a lot. It's beautiful. It's angelical and I think if I were to make that one I probably would go for actually the white that the model wears or even Hella's version where she marled a strand of baby pink and also white so that it wasn't just completely pink but it was kind of marled and I think that one really shines in this light color. It is all over cables and then it has some welts I think is what it's called. It's got those little toggle buttons at the sleeves which is a really lovely detail. It only comes in three sizes again and I do feel bad about talking about ego knits patterns like that when there's other designers that I could sh showcase on my podcast but I don't know if I'm actually going to be making this sweater like I said I think what's more important is the patterns that I end up talking about on the regular podcast episodes and I, I wanted to honestly say that this pattern is on my favorite list because I do love the look of it. But if I ever saw a pattern that looked like that but wasn't this one, I might go for that other one to showcase that size inclusivity of the other one. Hypothetically, but I have never seen any other pattern like this. The recommended yarn is uh, Biche et Bûche, Le Cashmere and Lamb's Wool and Le Petit Silk Mohair. And I was thinking of not using mohair for me, but I would use maybe their lamb's wool. And maybe I would use a strand of cashmere as the second strand, which again would be a huge investment. The first strand, le petit um, cashmere and lamb's wool is already quite expensive. And the second strand would be very expensive. So maybe this again would be a pattern that I do way down the line. Maybe when I make more money from this kind of channel and it would be a big reward or again as a reward from myself for achieving something else or just as a huge gift for a special occasion. But this feels like the perfect special pattern to showcase a very special yarn. Although this would have the risk of me never wearing this sweater. But it just feels like a feat and an achievement to be able to get this piece. It's not something I've ever seen in shops or anything. And it is just so eye-catching. And I haven't stopped thinking about it ever since I saw it being designed. It came out in, in March 2023 here. It is short, boxy, drop shoulder. Has a really nice detail line on the shoulder. And a double folded neck. And it's got some lace as well as cables on the sleeves, for example. Like I'll show in the photo. So that's it for this Ravelry bundle. I hope that you discovered a few new patterns or maybe that uh, some of the yarn that I showed inspired you to um, 
project plan some of these cable jumpers or other projects in general. I'm really looking forward to finally making myself one of these cable jumpers. I think the first one, like I said, might be the canvas or the Lucia, which were the first two patterns with a Gilead because it's just something that will be very reliable and soft and I know I'll wear and it's just a matter of finding the time to commit to those big cabled all over jumpers. The link will be in the description once again if you're wanting to see those patterns or if you're wanting to gift any of these patterns to me and I am looking forward to hearing your comments on this video as well as your recommendations for cable jumpers. I had asked before on my Instagram whether you wanted to see this video first or a vest pattern roundup and this one came first, the vest came second, so I'll be filming a video on a vest pattern roundup I guess quite soon. So make sure to follow me on Instagram if you're wanting to vote in future polls. I think that's it for me. I can't think of anything else that I need to say, so I will leave you here. But thank you so much for choosing to spend a little bit of time with me and watching this video. It's always a pleasure to chat all things knitting with you on this channel. I hope you're doing really well, keeping warm in this weather, and that you're enjoying your knitting time, because I sure am. Okay, bye everybody. Happy knitting! Mm -hmm.